All right, I am so stoked to finally be diving into the Memcard Pro 2 from 8-Bit Mods. We have all the other previous Memcard Pro products, the other two, I guess. But they've been really fun, and they've worked really, really well for my save needs, and they really provide some interesting features that I think are pretty fun, like FTP and just being able to easily back up your saves digitally. Now the Memcard Pro 2 is continuing on with these features, plus in... Coming updates, not available as of when I made this video, but we're going to get direct modes and different things like that for this to let us use this on a lot of cool digital devices like PS3 and PC. So in today's video, I want to take you through initial setup of the Memcard Pro 2, as well as backing up your PS2 saves, getting free MC boot installed on this thing, and getting game ID support running and all of your saves split into separate memory cards, so one per game. So let's dive in. So, some needed items as we begin. Obviously, a PS2 system, be it a slim or a fat model, doesn't matter. Then, of course, the Memcard Pro 2, which is kind of the whole point of this video, so if you don't have one of these, you will need to pick one up before trying to follow along with this video. But, there it is. And then we also need a micro SD card or a USB device to plug into it. Today, I am going to be demoing micro SD. So, we have an SD card reader here as well. And lastly, we need memory cards with our saves on them to transfer over to our new Memcard Pro 2. Or if you're starting from scratch, cool, that'll be great. And then we could also copy PS1 saves over if desired. And if you plan on using the Memcard Pro 2 in a PlayStation system, if you want to use the per game stuff, you are going to need an ODE like the X Station, which I have here, or a Terra Onion mode. Though, to be honest, I already have the Memcard Pro 1 in here, so I'm not really going to focus a whole lot on this side of things. So let's get started with SD card prep. So I got to insert it into my USB reader here and I'm just going to get this plugged into my computer. Once the micro SD card is inserted into your computing device of choice, we need to get it formatted into FAT32 or XFAT format. So by default, most cards under 32 gigs are already in FAT32 format, so they are technically good to go as is. But 8-Bit Mods recommends using the SD memory card formatter for Windows and Mac from the SD Association to format the card for optimal compatibility, so we're just going to go ahead and go through that process. So, download link in the description below. And then just scroll down and then you can download it for Windows or Mac. All right, now that that program is downloaded, just going to go ahead and get it extracted. Then it has its own installer here, so just going to run that real quick. And once installation is completed, just going to tell it to launch the program. Once the program is open, make sure that you have the right card selected. If you format the wrong card, that's on you. Please pay attention to what you're doing. But it gives you the card type here, and as well as the capacity, so you should be able to tell which one is which. And then you, if your card's not popping up, click refresh, or just try reseeding it and see if you get it to show up. But we could go ahead and leave quick format selected, and then we could give it a volume label if desired. So I'm just going to name this one MCP2 for Memcard Pro 2. You don't have to do that. It's for my own personal whatevers. But anyway, once set, click format. And you're going to get the warning that it's going to delete everything on that card, so click yes. And there we go, the card is now formatted, and we're ready to move on to installing the firmware. So I'll have a download link to the firmware page below, but it will list all of the available firmwares for the Memcard Pro 2, and we want to get the latest release. So as of me recording this video, that is version 0.99.3, released on December 28th, 2023. Depending on when you watch this video, it could be a much newer firmware, so just ignore the version number for today and go for the one that says latest release. And then just click the handy download button here. And once that download is finished, we just need to get this extracted, so just go ahead and do so. And you should come up with a folder named mcp2, and inside you'll see mcp2.bin and an OS folder. Now all we need to do is drag the MCP2 bin and OS folder onto the root of our newly formatted SD card here, so just like so. And the initial firmware setup is almost complete, so we're just going to go ahead and close out of this and safely eject it. And now we're going to take our micro SD card and put it into the Memcard Pro 2. This would be a lot easier with two hands, but whatever, don't care. We're going to cheat. There we go. All right, there it is. So 
micro SD card inserted into MemCard Pro 2. And now we're just going to go ahead and pop this into one of our memory card slots on the PS2. I'm going to use my PS2 slim for this for now. And now we're just going to go ahead and turn the PS2 on. And the MemCard Pro 2 will begin updating and doing initial setup. There we go. And there we go, update completed, it's restarting, and now it is creating default memory cards for us to use. Awesome. So, got a couple of status symbols up here. So if you see, we're in PS2 mode, it's running from the micro SD card, Wi-Fi is not connected, and the card size is 8 megabytes, and it's just default memory card, channel 1. So we're going to go ahead and start our Wi-Fi setup. So you hold down both of the buttons on the front of the card here to begin Wi-Fi setup. So write down the number that it gives you here. Now we're going to switch over to a phone or a computer that allows us to hook up to the MemCard Pro 2 Wi-Fi. So just going to we could disable outside Wi-Fi networks. Um, so we're going to, no, I need Wi-Fi on. There we go. We're going to go ahead and connect to the MemCard Pro 2's Wi-Fi network. And the password for the MemCard Pro 2's access point is mcpadmin. So then we can go ahead and get that connected. And now just type in that web address that it gave us. And there we go. So now we are on the Wi-Fi setup wizard for the MemCard Pro 2. So just click next. It's going to scan your Wi-Fi network. So just select yours and then enter your Wi-Fi password. And once you have the information entered, just click next. Join network and the MemCard Pro 2 will now reboot and all set. So now to gain access to our web UI, we just hold down the left button on the MemCard Pro 2 here to get the Wi-Fi screen. So there we go. Make note of its IP address here. So just write this down if need be. Now just type that IP address into a web browser and it'll bring up the MemCard Pro 2's web UI. And so here we go. Current memory card is just our generic memory card, number one. But we have the card browser and settings. So let's go ahead and dive into the settings. So Wi-Fi, we want that turned on. Otherwise, we can't access this. So our first option is to also enable an FTP server if desired. So if you want it enabled, you can just set a username and password here and then they can manage the card completely through FTP. This gives you the ability to transfer saves and other homebrew to the MemCard Pro 2 directly through Wi-Fi. So you don't have to actually take the SD card out. For PS1, we have enable game ID feature. This is on by default and load up last card on power up. This is also on by default. And then the same things for PS2. I'm going to cover reasons you won't want to have load last card on power up on by default in a moment. But for now, just quick look at the settings menu so we can just go ahead and back out of this. But under card browser, it created a default memory card for us, memory card 1. And this card is our default boot card, so every time the PS2 turns on, this card should be the one that loads up. But now that we've got the MemCard Pro initially set up with web UI and it has created our default memory card, I have built a pre-made memory card image to get you a free MC boot install with the game ID versions of OPL and Grim Doomer's OPL to make your lives extremely easy. So on the current firmware, as of this video, only the 8 megabyte images are available. 16 and 32 megabyte images will be available in the next update, and this folder will be updated with larger cards as they arrive. And for anyone with the PS2 Slim 90,000 or a PS2 Bravia TV, I will have a fun tuna option as well. I just haven't created it for this video. But link to this folder will be in the description below, so you can just grab the image size that you want. So for today, we're going to go ahead and grab the 8 megabyte one. And with this downloaded, just go ahead and get it extracted. And inside the folder, you will see the memory card 1-1.mc2, and this is the exact same one that the MemCard Pro 2 creates by default for you. So just get your MemCard Pro 2's SD card inserted back into your PC or other computing device that you happen to be using. Open up the PS2 folder, go inside your memory card 1 folder, and then just overwrite the memory card that you already have in place there. And there we go. But now we can go ahead and take that out. 
get the memory card inserted back into your MemCard Pro 2. And now when you boot your PS2, you should see the FreeMC boot screen pop up here. And you'll be loaded into the FreeMC boot dashboard and this is on the latest 1.966 version as of making this video. So this gives you access to Launch Shelf and again, the Game ID version of standard OPL, as well as the Game ID version of the Grim Doomer OPL if you're using a PS2 FAT with an XFAT hard drive. If you happen to have a free MC boot set up previously, you can now copy over settings and any other apps over to the MemCard Pro 2. So I'm going to do so now. So I'm inserting my original free MC boot memory card now, and I'm going to go ahead and launch into Launch Elf. Now under the file browser, I can go into MC1, this is the memory card in port 2. And so in here I had a different version of Launch Elf that I want to copy over, as well as the beta for OPL in here already, so I don't really need that, but I want to have this one, so I'm going to copy that into my apps folder on MemCard Pro 2. There we go. And then you could also copy over your configuration data for um, for FreeMC boot, as well as your config folder for OPL. So I'm gonna copy the OPL config data as well as my system config data. So just gonna press R1 to open up the menu here and copy these. Now triangle to back out to the main thing, go up to MC0, and then R1 again and paste them and wait for it to do its thing. And when you get an overwrite notification, you can go ahead and press OK. And there we go. So I'm going to take the memory card out of my slot 2 now and reboot PS2. And there we go, all of my settings have copied over. But if you copy over your previous settings, you may notice that the OPL apps are not showing up. And that's because they're probably expecting different names, but you could get these back easily by just going into your free MC boot configurator. Head down to configure OSD sys options, navigate to your OPL item on your list, I named mine PS2 games for simplicity's sake. And then you can just set the path back to memory card 0, apps, and then choose which version of OPL you want to have. So we're going to go with just OPL game ID, clear out that old one there, return. And then we're going to save the configuration to memory card zero. And there we go. And there we go. There's my copy of OPL showing up now. And if I launch into it, all my previous OPL settings and all my games lists will pop up just as they're supposed to. So there we go. Config loaded. All my games are here from my MX4SIO. Now all I need to do is transfer saves over and we're 100% back up and running. So let's go ahead and cover how to do that now. So I'm going to get my PS2 memory card inserted into slot 2 here to transfer saves over to the MemCard Pro 2. And for this video we're going to be focusing on using the game IDs to have every game have its own save and memory card. If you would like to use just one large memory card, I'd recommend waiting for the update to come out so you have access to 16 and 32 megabyte cards and larger as future updates arrive. Once the memory card's in place, just go ahead and launch into Launch Elf. So if you're using that default image, it'll just say Launch Elf on the menu here. But in my custom setup, I named it File Explorer because I think it looks nicer. But just get booted into Launch Elf. From here, enter the file browser. Now select MC1, so the memory card in port 2. And we're going to copy over all of our game saves. So we're going to ignore the... So we're going to ignore BA Data System, BA Exec System and we're gonna grab everything else. So if you look down at the bottom tray, you'll see which button is for mark. So just go ahead and mark all the saves that you want to copy over. So just like that. Now go ahead and copy them. Now once you're on this menu, go ahead and change the channel on your Memory Card Pro 2 to a new fresh page just to ensure you have enough space. So you can easily do this by pressing the button on the face of the Memory Card Pro 2 here. And it will create a new temporary virtual memory card. Now head into MC0 and paste in all of your saves. 
It's also worth mentioning you could do this through the PS2 browser as well, but this is just a much faster method. And there we go, all the saves from that memory card are now transferred over to my Memcard Pro 2. So now just repeat the process with any additional memory cards you might have and change pages as necessary. I'm going to cover a program that will separate all of these into individual game folders for use with Game ID as we move forward. But once you have all your saves transferred over, we can just go ahead and power down the PS2, take out the Memcard Pro 2 SD card, and move it over to our computer. So now to separate our game saves into memory cards specifically for them, we are going to be using the MCP2 Save Splitter by Kester. And so we're going to need to download some extra stuff for this one. So we need to download the MyMC version 2.6.G2 2. from the linked page. So all this will be in the description below again. So we're just going to go ahead and download that. And then if you have any saves that are in .psv format, we need the PSV Save Converter tool, which we could get from the link page here again. And we want the Win64 version. And then finally we need the actual script here itself. So on the code page here, you can just download it as a zip. So now just go ahead and get everything extracted. All right, so we've got our save splitter here. Now in the import folder, I'm gonna delete that. And we're gonna add in all the saves that we wanna import to our MemCard Pro 2 to get their own subfolders. So I copied all my saves into this second virtual memory card here. So I'm just gonna add that to the import folder. And then for fun, let's go ahead and add in saves from my PCSX2 install here, so let's go ahead and add these as well. All right, with our saves in place, we're gonna make it so this actually works. So you'll see my MC folder here. So we're gonna open up the my MC app here and copy everything into it. And now we need to add the files for the PSV converter. So we're gonna open up that build folder we extracted. And inside you'll see another build. This is really obnoxious, so we're going to extract that again. And then we're going to go ahead and extract it again. And we'll finally end up with a folder that gives us psvconverterwin.exe. And we're just going to drag that in right there. All set. Now we need to open up a PowerShell window as administrator. So in your search bar in Windows, just type in PowerShell until it pops up in the suggested. Now right click on it and run as administrator. Now we need to direct PowerShell to the folder where the converter program script is stored. So the easiest way to do this is just to right click on the script itself. Click on properties and just copy the file path that shows up right here. So just copy that and then paste it into PowerShell. Copy it into PowerShell with the CD command and don't double paste it like I did. And then just press enter and now type in, now type in dot slash split dot ps1 and press enter and hopefully your settings will be nicer to you than mine were it's not letting me execute scripts so on stack overflow there is a override for this to let you run any other script so i'll have a link to this page in the description below but just copy this in to powershell paste it run it type in a And now you can run the split command and all of your saves will be separated into their own split memory cards. And once that's finished, you can go ahead and disable that unprotected script setting. So you can just come back into this web page and change it back to normal settings. That way you have better security on your computer. So same deal, just copy the right command, paste it, and then A, and good to go. But once the script has successfully run, if you open up the export folder, you will see that you now have a pre-made memory card for every single one of the games in your folder. 
So we could just go ahead and copy all of these. Back into the Memcard Pro 2 save folder under PS2 and paste them in. And I'm just going to delete that original secondary memory card I had there. There we go. So there we go. All set up for individual memory cards with OPL with game ID. So just going to close out of this and eject it. Going to get that SD card inserted back in the Memcard Pro 2 and load up into OPL. All right, so now I'm just going to launch into my OPL here with my MX4 SIO. And we'll now give this a test. So I'm just going to go ahead and load up Ace Combat 5 here. And the Memcard Pro 2 has changed over to my Ace Combat 5 save file. And we can verify by going into our load option here. And there is my Ace Combat 5 save. Absolutely flawless. Now, one of the shortcomings of uh, the Game ID OPL so far is that in game reset doesn't change you back over to your free MC boot memory card. So, if you were to in game reset, this would leave it on Ace Combat 5 and it wouldn't bring you back to your free MC boot memory card. And even a full on restart is just going to load up the last memory card that it had loaded up originally. So we're going to need to change a setting within the web UI to get this to launch us back into FreeMC boot for us. So in the Memcard 2 web UI, we need to go into settings and we need to disable the load last card on power up option here. And we want the default startup card to be that memory card once. That way we always load into FreeMC boot on a fresh reboot. With that set, we could just click on save. And now when we turn off the PS2, and turn it back on. It loads us back into memory card one and free MC boot. And there we have it, Memcard Pro 2 set up for PS2 stuff specifically. Hope that you have found this video very helpful and easy to follow. And I look forward to covering more stuff on the Memcard Pro 2 as it arrives, such as bigger virtual memory cards, as well as PS1 stuff. So stay tuned, we're not done with this guy yet. But a big thank you to everyone for watching today's video. Again, I hope it helps you out and gets you set up running really nicely with the Memcard Pro 2. This is going to be a fun one. And again, just thank you for watching today's video. It means the world to me to have you here helping us support us and all of that good jazz. But here at the end, a couple of usual favors. Thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on how much you like it. Sub button, notification bell, and then for anyone interested in further helping support us, you can check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Every little bit helps, and we're super grateful to all of our current champs. You are all so amazing. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we will see you all back next video.